In October 2022, I met Andreas for the very first time. Andreas is a very well-known Balboa dancer and also slow ball dancer, and we don't have that many of them. So when I saw him dancing in Turkey, uh, I was immediately inspired by his dancing. He is creative, he listens to the music, he puts it in his body, he uses all his body parts, and he really plays with his follow. So that's why I wanted to talk to him about creativity in slow ball. Now, before we go into watching the interview, here's a short clip that I filmed of him in Turkey to see what I mean. <laughs> Andreas, thank you for meeting me today online. Thank uh, you. We're going to talk about slow ball, but specifically about creativity, playfulness uh, in dancing. Um, before we go into all that, I would really like to know how and when did you learn to dance slow ball? So I, I went to London Balboa Festival in the beginning of the 2000s. It was like a big, one of Europe's only Balboa festival in the, in the beginning of the 2000s. So you had Dean Raftery, you had Ray Cunningham coming regularly to those. And I remember having classes with them. Back then, I didn't really understand much of, of, of what they were doing. I was more, you know, just focusing on, on trying to get my fast Balboa uh, working, basically. And... But, you know, you, you, uh, you knew what Dean's basic were, basically. Then, in like, say, 2013, maybe, I started to realize that I need to improve my rhythm as a dancer. I need to, and I one of the ways you can do that is to practice dancing slow. So I suggested to my partner back then, it was Mette, Mette Herlitz, that we should start to practice some slow balboa. And, and we had like a routine that we end every practice with 20 minutes slow bell. So that's how I really like started to get into it. And, and, uh, and from, from those practices, I went back to the old videos. I went back to the old London Balboa DVDs. <laughs> and uh, I started to, you know, figure out for myself what, what exactly they were doing. So yeah. Dean Raftery, you're saying, Ray Cunningham, just for the people who don't know them, they are two of the old timers we consider as also sort of the yeah, old timers for slow ball. Yeah, they are uh, uh, Dean and Nancy Raftery, uh, Dean's wife, and also Ray Cunningham. Well, the only the only original dancer we have together with Ray is Darlene Lind. It's a demo they did in uh, Val Rendezvous. So those are the ones we have. We know that more, more dancer, dancers existed, uh, though we do. But yeah. those are the only ones we know and we have film off. Of course we know, yeah. So since your discovery of slow ball in about 2013, um, your, your dancing, your style of dancing evolved. How would you describe your slow ball style nowadays so <clears throat> i i really try to um first of all i i'm a kind of a person that i i'll enjoy analyzing and i try to make try to explain for myself in a way that is logical and and i want to look at slow ballas as a slow swing dance first of all and then you have you have the inspiration from the original dancer, but it's it, it's also a slow swing dance, and with everything that comes with dancing swing, you know. Um, so that's the point of departure for me, the music and what you have, and then then I you start to look at the dancers. What do they do? What do Dean does? What's his his uh, significant ways of moving, what is Ray's significance, significant way of moving, and you kind of build the dance from there, you know. 
Um, what I'm, I'm not a dancer that if I, I can break down something, uh, let's say, try to copy Dean's basic as much as I can. But at the, at the end of the day, I'm going to try to understand it rather and then do my own version based on the underlying mechanics I can see. Mm. That yeah. makes sense. So I'm, I'm, I'm really like, I don't want to do exactly the same. That's important to me. I want to do it in a way that makes sense to me. And since we only have two original dancers, uh, two couples, I, I need to use other sources. And, you know, I'm an archaeologist from the, uh, before I do. Really? Uh, yes, professional dancing. Uh, I, so I, maybe I think uh, as an academic or as an archaeologist, but I realized that it's not enough with two couples for a dance. Right. So I'm going to use whatever other sources I have. And one of the sources is how would I move to this music? How do how do I feel like moving to a slow Benny Goodman ballad or, or a Teddy Wilson? And, you know, how how do how do I want to do that? And then I also started to look at other uh, ballroom vintage dancing. Like uh, the ballroom blues dances, uh, Savoy walks, and that's that's a whole big chapter. But you are, you you got to put pieces together from whatever sources you have, and this is how I I try to think, and I think that's uh, painted my uh, slow bell. That's yeah. a lot of different sources. So taking the old timers, Dean and Ray. And other influences from old swing dance, or not not necessarily even swing dance, but just old dance dance that were danced back in the day in the dance halls. Yeah, ballroom. Yeah, ballroom dances ballroom. because it's yeah. because uh, some of these bands they would play play a blues song next to yeah. a swing song. They wouldn't uh, in at Savoy they they would play swing and they could play a really bluesy slow song, and people yeah. would adapt to that. So. Well, th I think we box it a little bit too much today in, in between different dances. It's a blues Indeed. dance, which is, you know, but really it's, it, yeah. Yeah, we seem to have, yeah, put it in boxes indeed. And yeah, also have like only Boboa parties or only slow ball parties or only blues parties. Uh, less mixed, maybe, indeed. Yeah, but, but uh, right now, in a way, we also focusing a lot to just in try to figure out how to dance slow balboa you know <laughs> maybe we need we need this time we can join in later with the with the blues community which is yeah. who's who developed their slow dancing way longer and much more than we have yes there was definitely a reason there's a lot of overlap between the two dances i think for me at least in yes. how we move especially mm -hmm. the ballroom blues Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah, and if we, because you you said before, like uh, you analyze the two, like Dean and Ray, you analyze how they're dancing, but then you you make your own your own way of moving. How does your dancing nowadays relate to what they did? Can you say like this and this I took from them and and incorporated in my own dancing or? I, so for me, if I if I try to describe what for me like my experience of what slow balboa is, it's it's first and foremost predominantly a swing dance, you know, yeah. based on based on swing, uh, and uh, why is it so? I think it's so because of the 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 way you would approach a more bluesy song, you would have more moving hips um, you would have more asymmetry in your body and and you know it's the, the way i see dean and, and ray when they dance they there's a little bit more polyrhythmic in in the in the body in dean i think in this way of moving uh, but they are not moving their hips very much and they're it's very it's kind of even in relation to the floor, the same horizontal level. Uh, it's shuffling, it's constant moving, uh, it's very rhythmical. Like, uh, I mean, all 
vintage dancing is 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 like a rhythmic bass, you know, the way they think. Um, it's a lot of a uh, dancing in between the beats, you know, holding it, delaying it, and small, uh, you know, like that. Um, it's uh, that flow that you you can have one rhythm in your feet and your step, and another rhythm in your upper body. Um, and then you have all the shapes, turns and rotation, a lot of rotation. So when I, when I, uh, my inspiration is from Dean, for example, is, you know, the, the ability to, the way he leads and, and drives through triple step, his smoothness, there's no pulse. I think Ray has a little bit more pulse in some positions in his direction changes, but uh, Dean is so smooth. It's crazy. Um, I like that and the slidiness and uh, and also the in the following in the delay in the hip. I can see that when you dance with uh, Dean because he has his connection is quite high and with allows the followers to move hip a little bit more. Um, I also like the way Ray has his counter body motions and very quick turns and uh, his uh, snappy uh, uh, syncopated uh, ball changes. I like that. So I, I try to, I re really try to not copy s singular movements but more take the ingredients and put them into uh, a different order, you know. Yeah. Do you think it's important to uh, for for new slow ball dancers to go back to Ray and Dean, or do you think that it now evolved so much that, that it's no need? There's no need anymore, maybe to 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 look well, back I, at these originals. I think it's super important to look at these dancers. Really important right? because otherwise, I think uh, I think there are a rare example of slow dancing with rhythm that isn't like foxtrot or, or tango you know it's a it's it's um how should i say i think they actually add something new to the area of slow dancing if i uh, i don't okay disclaimer here i'm my <laughs> dancing is not like very strong i i've uh, I tried uh, some blues dancing here and there, and even taught it a few times, but but uh, mostly out of necessity, actually, then uh, I because I'm not very good at it. Um, but I can I can see I can see, for example, in Savoy walks in slow drag, I see a lot of resemblance, uh, and I see a lot of things that we have in slow bell that that would be interesting, maybe. To um, to add, see, I it I think these dances adds to the idea of what slow dancing can be. That makes sense. Yes, it does. We should just put it all on one pile and just have all these elements to play with. Doesn't matter if it's blues or slow bell. I don't think. Well, I think I think it's important to know uh, where the inspiration comes from and and to know the history and the background and to know the original dancers but then in the end i think you you need to be you need to be your own artist when you dance yeah, mm. yeah. when i was looking at because we met in turkey for the first time uh, yeah. and i was uh, looking at your dancing something that i immediately noticed is how you are very playful and creative in your dancing it's something that's that, that's immediately draw my eye. You, you, you listen to instruments and you put them in your way of moving. Um, so that's what I want to explore a little bit more because it, it triggered me. Um, but before we go into it, what do you consider as, as creativity or playfulness in dancing? What is it to you? Uh, first of all, thank you for, for uh, complimenting my dancing. Uh, I Creativity, I think, I ultimately I like to break rules, you know. I like to formulate rules and break them, uh, and then I like to play. 
I think a, uh, a play playfulness is uh, it's a great way to emulate partnership uh, to stop thinking you know it's it's something we learn as, as kids and and to to be able to use that as a resource in dancing it's I think it's uh, probably one of the best ways actually um, so I do, I'm not sure what creativity is in a way. I think it's maybe uh, an ability to uh, surprise yourself uh, or, or to, to find a strategy to go where you haven't been before in the dance. You know, uh, do a, a new move, a new step or... or uh, but ultimately, it, you need, it's hard work. <laughs> it's it's something you need to practice. Uh, uh, let's say if you if you learn a move, uh, you can learn a move, but learn ten different ways of getting into it and two, ten different ways of exiting it, and then in between, ten different ways of of uh, changing the rhythm or small details or develop a really good practice of of of. Uh, listening to your partner if you're a leader I'm talking as a leader right now uh, because you can get a lot of inspiration from how your follower chooses to move right so yeah. if, if you come prepared you can be creative right yeah <laughs> I, mean. I don't know I'm just I'm just babbling here but you I think yeah yeah, some people, because Slobo, like Boboa, is danced in a closed position, some people feel or think that the dance doesn't offer a lot of room for creativity because you're so, you know, you're so kind of, st yeah, stuck. Um, do you think that's true? Or do you feel that Slobo and Boboa offer as much as room and space for creativity as, for example, Lindy Hop? I think, um, I definitely think that it offers the same space for creativity and playfulness um, but it in different ways obviously i mean if i dance in close position in fast or slow it's going to be more uh, about following and leading weight shifts sh shifts you know weight changes that's an important part uh, and then of course triple steps and different kind of rhythms and, and shapes so so in a way, from an from an outside perspective, it can look a little bit closed. Like, as a follower, you are following. Period. You know, but then if you look at what following and leading means, it, it's it's a dialogue. Uh, so when you follow, you say something with how you move. It's there's no one way of following. Uh, as there are as many ways of following as there are different followers different bodies, different ways of, you know, listening to the music and interpreting, you know. And so at the end of the day, what happens is that if I lead a step through, uh, it can be done in so many different ways with so many timings and, and that it's, and, and that's, that's creates, it creates a, like an open space. So you under, you got to understand how you as a follower affects the leader and a leader how you are reacting to the follower because it's it's like a chain reaction maybe i start to dance by leading a weight change but then after that we are initiating and responding to each other constantly yeah so you're saying that follows can take maybe a bit more initiative as well or shoot or could or there is at least space for them to to if you lead um uh, indeed a walkthrough or an opening up it's the follow can do something with it. You choose how to respond to that lead you're giving. Exactly. And so, so one way is to how do you react, right? Uh, then also, you can also initiate like, a, a, initiate like a weight change or change some, or add a, a, a triple step or it's, it's a little bit more, uh, you need to know a little bit more about the dancing to be able to do that, to understand where, where the space are. It's not a beginner thing, perhaps, but, but uh, uh, I think that's 
like a, a development we had the past decade in, in swing dancing that we are understanding a bit more on, on uh, how, how the different roles, leader and follower, relate to each other. And that even if you are a leader predominantly, predominantly during a dance, also the follower will initiate things like a weight change or, or a different shape and so on. Yeah. So, so it's not yeah. as black, as black and white, it's more, yeah, you have the leading role and the follow role, but in between it's a conversation and both can, can initiate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a gray area, it's very interesting. Yeah. In yeah. Way, yeah. I can imagine indeed in the beginning that's hard to find the space to, to do this as a follow. Uh, and as a lead, how to respond to that if your follow suddenly does something that you didn't plan. But I guess that's all, yeah, trying it out and, and practice, yeah. right? And what we're talking about now is like from a technical, you know, a point of view. And I think for me, I, I also really value, you know, when I, I started to follow more, I started to realize, wow, it's so nice to follow. <laughs> it's so <laughs> nice to... Uh, be the one that are a little bit delayed and and reacting to the music more instantly there's no planning i don't have to i just i can be in the moment that's beautiful and i think i think uh, uh, sometimes when we talk about lead and follow we make it sound like uh, following is a passive thing but but within within that space space as a follower i i really enjoy not uh, adding a lot i can just follow through and i don't have to add a lot of footwork or things or i don't have to initiate i just enjoyed that part you know uh, and i didn't feel passive doing it i felt how should i say Ah, as if I'm, you know, th there was still a conversation going on and my, my, uh, my partner listened to me and we listened to each other and yeah, I think we, uh, uh, following is, is not from the, even from the very beginning, it's not like a, the, uh, uh, a bleak copy of the leading or, you know, no. the negative, no. Not at all. No. It's a, you have to take your part at least. It's an active role you have to have. Yes. 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 If we look at, um, you have your partner, you have the music, you have your settings. What inspires you most when you are on the dance floor to, I don't know, bring out the creativity? I think on a social dancing floor, it's my partner. Um, my partner and the music in second hand. I think my partner comes first, actually. I think, uh, I mean, I, I want to be, I, I want to be following the music, of course, it's not a, it's, it's never really between my partner and the music, I mean, in, maybe in a social setting, uh, but I'm mostly insp uh, inspired by my partner, for sure. Um, yeah. I think yeah. it's you you gotta walk on the floor and feel like you wanna dance with this person, you wanna make these three minutes, whatever, uh interesting for both of us. And it's a conversation, wordless conversation. Yeah. True. And mm. uh if we talk outside of the social dance floor, do you ever go looking at video clips of other dancers or maybe do something completely different to spark your creativity? Where do you get it outside from the social setting? I <clears throat> I think teaching provides a lot of inspiration uh, because if you look at dancer, you, you also when you teach, you you get a lot of new ideas all the time. Uh, I sometimes go I watch other dancers I watch uh, the, I mean I do, I do Lindy Hop and, and Balboa uh, most of the time uh, but I can look at West Coast Wing uh, I love uh, trying to understand what Carolina Shag dancers do uh, 
I uh, love watching uh, all these amazing uh, solo jazz dancers we have in the world. I love watching them. It's so inspirational. Uh, I do some tango sometimes. I go sheet, I go to a milonga and I dance a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be forever uh, a promising beginner because I don't really have time to take any classes ever. But it's fun, and I, I have some friends there, so, so it's a social thing. But you get a lot of ideas when you just watch people. Yeah. yeah. Do you also actively practice your creativity? Like, do you, I don't know, take a moment with Olga or another dancer and say like, okay, now let's practice your creativity and have some, do some exercises with it or play around? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes, I, I enjoy that. I, uh, I'm pretty good at f coming up with small games and challenges for myself um, when I practice. It depends a little bit on who I practice with, uh, you know, because it's different how you're, what your partner wants to do. But for me it works, so I, so I, I can come up with some ideas that I, I want to try this and then we do it, you know. Um, and most of the times it's because I, I want to come up with something for a new class or a new something something. So the, the teaching is actually a, a good engine for also for for working on your own dancing. Um, but for example, uh, I, I enjoyed uh, during the pandemic, I enjoy coming up with games where you can practice by yourself using because you um, some dancers learn by improvising right or or they need to work on improvisation uh, because sometimes when you do solo dancing or when you teach online you can become a little bit stuck in in just repeating what the teacher do and and uh, so some some of the learners you I had uh, online very much uh, learners that that uh, learn step by step and they enjoy repeating exact patterns. So I wanted to challenge them in, in trying to get the dancing feeling even though they were at home, if that makes sense. Yeah. So for, for example, um, one exercise was about finding out how a specific concept in Balboa, let's say stop and freezes. We do that a lot, like sharpness, stop freezes in Balboa. How would that look in other art forms? In theater, for example, what, what's like a, something in, in, uh, in theater has a completely different, uh, a freeze is something else, right? It could be something you find out or, or it's not a, like a stop motion. It's more like a, a, a moment for afterthought, for example. Um, in visual design, what would, would a freeze be? Visual design, it could be, for example, something interrupted, like a line that is broken or something like that. Yeah. Um, in music, a freeze or a stop is more like a pause because music doesn't have that, you know? So if you think like that and you take, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dance as a, I'm going to take the freeze stop and do as they would do in theater instead. And then you start to like develop like a, some kind of expression, you know, you use this to boost your creativity or your playfulness, you know, um, it's just an example. Um, not sure if it works for everyone, but I, I find it interesting just to, to try and, and, um, um, yeah. But you can I'm also- Very curious how that looked when you were doing that, like putting the theater and the- Yeah. Uh, the visual design in your dancing. <laughs> Do yeah, you have a video uh, of that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we probably, uh, I did a lot of uh, practices with uh, Gio, I think we, we did a lot of, uh, lot of that. But we also, I, we also, I also took this to, for example, we did similar exercises at Ballad Week, uh, Fast Balboa, where we practiced this, uh, but also just doing, like exercises where you where you okay you have to do in this move you're going to work with now 
you say to say to a couple, you have to do this. You have to do a grapevine. Right? Or let's say and then you have to come up with something that, that has a great part. Or you can say, uh, you can't do an hour and in. You can do long list, you can do whatever, but you can't finish with an hour and in. Or you can only dance slow bell uh, using going into triples from slows. Not allowed to do triples from, from quicks. You know, like. Uh, like give yourself like uh, small restrictions and see what happens because mm -hmm. it forces you to do things in a different way yeah very good one gonna try that so watch out yeah, students yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um we've been talking about it already a little bit and things you can do uh, as a, a, a reader or a watcher of this video but what can you do you have any tips, specific tips for people who want to train their creativity and playfulness in dancing? I, I think, uh, I think listen to a lot of music. Music is important. Listen a lot, like really know the music, know how the structure is and everything. And, um, um, so practicing musicality is a good way. Uh, practicing, like I mentioned before, if you learn a move, learn how to do the first part move and combine it with something else. So different entrances, different exits, and work on timing. Work on doing the same thing in different ways. So eventually you can combine things and it's going to look like you're super creative because you can, you you can go from one thing to the other. It's just as you practice, you train your brain to do things in different order, you know? Then uh, I also think um, being able to, if you're a leader, invite the follower, be good at creating an environment where you both feel open and safe with each other. I think that's an important skill. Uh, for both roles, uh, and that can really boost a lot of, you know, the boost the of confidence. You don't feel judged when you social dance, and I think that's a, a super good skill also for creativity. Uh, not taking yourself too seriously, but still, you know, practice hard, but, but laugh about it. Uh, sometimes when I social dance, I make, like, make it look like I'm making a mistake and I'm saying I'm sorry to my follower you know even though I I did it intentionally just to make you know so we end up on the same level but because a lot of times when students dance with teachers they are half terrified you know <laughs> yes <laughs> it's good to f find ways of and that makes the dance eventually much more comfortable for both of us because we so yeah, I don't know. I'm just uh, enumerating a lot of uh, uh, ideas here. Yeah, well, very good ideas. I think very helpful for a lot of dancers who feel that you know they their dancing could use a little bit extra. Well, not extra, but feel stuck maybe in uh, in what they've been doing and want to get loose and tangle it and. Yeah, and sometimes dance. Uh, to different music, I think I think that's helpful. You mean like non swing da swing dancing music? Absolutely. Bring something on. Just just. Uh, uh, I mean, um, sometimes it's good to do that. Not only because you you may lose the swing feeling eventually, but you may discover something, like an emotion or a feeling that you didn't have with a swing song, uh, something you, you've been lacking in your dancing. So you can add up, take that in. Um, yeah, or you you understand if you dance to, uh, it's a classic, classic music, you try to do slow to that, you realize the importance of rhythm, maybe. So it can be an eye opener for something else that you need to work on or because, yeah. The, yeah. 
I'm looking so forward to putting on Spice Girls in my classes. <laughs> oh yeah, slow back classes with Spice Girls. Yeah, yes, well. why not? <laughs> I, might, I think, uh, yeah, you have to be your own coach a little bit or... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything you would like to add or say um, on this topic, something we haven't discussed yet, things you something you find important to, uh, to tell our watchers? I think one of the things I really enjoy when it comes to slow bell is uh, that I can be a little bit more it opens up possibilities of being a little bit more rhythmic in my musicality. With that, because it, it's just a combination of slow quicks and syncopations um, in different ways that opens up like a, I can be way more uh, like a musician in the band than in, in, uh, in faster bell or other faster swing dancing for that sake. So I really like that, and, and that's a, I think that's a great thing with slow bell. Um, and learn how to scat. I mean, it's it's slow bell is in a way closer to tap dancing than than uh, <laughs> <laughs> closer to tap dance because of the rhythm feel. You need to really know where these syncopations are and the difference between in between a syncopation. You know where you put emphasis and and having like a super good rhythm awareness and i think i think as a couple dance it it has that it really forces you to to be good at that so if you if you really want to be good at rhythm you can do tap or you can do slow bell <laughs> <laughs> baby <Yeah. laughs> the good commercial talk like if you want to be good at rhythm just do tap or slow bell <laughs> pick slow bell yeah. Yeah, or yeah, or slow dancing in general. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your thoughts and your wisdom on slow bell and creativity um, specifically. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you about this. It really sparked my creativity and um, looking forward to bringing this to the dance floor. And I hope it did the same to everyone who is watching this. Um, and thank you for for uh, taking your time to do it. I, I love that it's really difficult questions you ask, and uh, uh, I got to see them beforehand. But I actually I understood I'm not going to try to answer them because I wanted to answer them in the conversation. <laughs> and I realize it's uh, uh, thank you for bringing this up. We need to talk more about musicality and creativity in general. I think. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, until we meet again on the dance floor. I hope you've enjoyed this interview with Andreas. If you like to learn more about Slowball, please also watch my interview with Mickey Fortunashi about the history of Slowball and with Annie and Gaspar about the connection in Slowball. So subscribe to my channel and hope to see you next time. <laughs>